Come in. Hey, Erwin, how you doing? I'm doing fine, Sheriff. Come in. Have a seat. Oh, thank you Bring very much. Bring over here. Bring one right here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, what you been up to? I've been working on a rose-breasted grosbeak and also on a tufted titmouse. That's easy for you to say. Do you know what they are? They're birds. Yes, that's right. That's yep. what I carve. Do you know how I know that? How do you know that? It's because that's all you do is carve birds. That's correct. Yes, you're right. So you have yeah. any new birds you work on lately? I've, I've been working on a bluebird and eventually he'll oh. be put on a base. He, he's setting right over there. You can see I him. see him. Yeah. I see it's not on his perch. No, yet. but it will be eventually. That's really nice. I can imagine what it's going to look like on that perch. Thank you. That's going to look good, I hope. How long have you been carving birds? I've been carving birds for 25 years. 25 years. That's a long time. That's right. And you do a good job at it. You're a talented man. Oh, thank you much. So, uh, how do you get an idea to do a bird? You just think of a bird and you start doing the bird, carving? No, no. There's a lot of lot of pre things that you have to do first. I have to look it up in a book and, and do some research on it, its size and all of that. So after you research it through all these books you have, yes. then you make the bird. Well, no, it's a, it's a little more than that. I, then I have to select the wood that I'm gonna, gonna cut the bird out of. Well, the type of wood. The type of wood, yeah. Okay, so then you make the bird. Well, no, no, then I've got to uh, make sure that the wood is the right size, and then I can put the dimensions on and start doing it that way. Well, what do you do after that? Well, then I make the bird. Oh, then you carve it. Then I carve the bird, that's right. Make the bird, carve the bird, yeah. same thing. Yeah. So let's suppose, okay, you figure out, you researched it, right? And you picked out the type of wood and the block that you're gonna use and make sure, I guess, it's big enough for whatever right. bird right. you're doing. Yeah. What's the next step? Well, then I make the bird. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> but when you make the bird, what do you, I need, uh, I don't know, you'll draw on the block. I the, draw on the block, yes. I guess that. I have to take my pattern and put the pattern on the, the, the wood then I have to cut it out on the bandsaw. So you have patterns? Oh yes. Now where do you get your patterns? I make them. I make them myself. And do you make the patterns from the research from the books? Yes. Then I have to go to the saw and cut out the basic shape of the bird. To, to maintain the profile of a bird, I have to take the block that I've cut out and I draw a line at the center of the block, both top and bottom. And then as I'm carving that block, I never take that line that I've drawn off. That maintains the profile of the bird. Oh, I see. Then I keep shaping until, I've, until I'm satisfied with how it's coming out. And I use a, a unit called a Fordham. The Fordham is basically a, uh, a motor, motorized uh, a unit that has a, a flexible shaft. And I can put burrs in, in the end of the shaft and I can shape that way. I have oh, a lot thing. of different burrs. It has a foot pedal that controls the speed and uh, I can make it go faster or slower, uh, depending on the amount of uh, uh, power that I need to, uh, to do the carving in a certain area on the bird. And are you looking at pictures all the while while you're doing this? Or pretty much, pretty memory? much, but I'm, I'm, but I'm being careful because the burrs could hurt my hand. Oh, I see. So I wear a, a leather glove on my left hand and, and do the work with my right hand. What do you do after you got all shaped? Well, after I've got it in all shaped, and I'm happy with what I've got shaped, then I will start doing detailing on it. And I do it by taking and, and uh, doing pencil marks on it to mm -hmm. indicate where the, the wing feathers and the tail feathers and the eyes and the beak and, and everything like that are going to be. Then I put a, a sanding unit in the end of my Fordham unit. Okay. And then I sand the bird and smooth it to the point where I want it. Then I take a burning tool and I start putting the the uh, fine feathers in for the bird. Oh, you burn in the feathers. Right. I have I've, I've penciled them in so that I know where they're going to go. I see. Then I use the burner to uh, to show them the way they should look. Now, after all done doing that, is that when you paint it? Uh, not quite yet. I want to make sure that the feet are going to sit on a on a mount that I have uh, thought about, and uh, I, I get the feet lined up. I can, I can either make my own feet or I can buy them. You can buy mm, cast you can feet, buy the for, feet for a small really? bird. Yes, that's right. You've got to get the legs in the right spot so that the bird is looking as though it's being held up properly on its body. So you, when but, you paint it, 
the legs can be in or cannot be in. Either way, either way. But probably there will be a leg hole already in the body of the bird so that uh, it could go in there and be cemented in. So, and then you paint it and you have various paints. Yes. What about brushes? You use different types oh, of brushes? Oh, I use all or? kinds of different brushes. Really? Little ones and big ones and, and so on and so forth. I, uh, uh, I use acrylic paints, which are a water-based paint. They dry quite, quite quickly. And uh, uh, also, uh, I, if I put two, if I put two colors that I want to put together, but I, but I want them to be kind of blended in together, if I make sure that I put those two paints and keep them wet at that point, then I can then I can blend that 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 butting area together. Over by that blue bird, looks like there's some feathers on top of that newspaper. Yes, I make feather pins. So they're pins with my that, scrap, like you wear. Yes, that's right. Really? That's right. So how many different types of feather pins do you make? Oh, probably I've got about 20 different types. The birds are done. I got the painted, and you're all done with it, and uh, then you sell it, and uh -huh. and you get rich. Well, I don't know about that part, but. <laughs> Well, I noticed on the table over here, I noticed this when I walked in, you have five birds, and they look like they're, they're all completed. Yes, they are. So, um, I, I know the one on the left is a cardinal. Can you tell me uh, about these birds? Sure. Okay, oh, tell me about this cardinal on the left over here. Well, the cardinal is sitting on a, on a block of hardwood, and that's the male cardinal. Now, the female cardinal looks quite different from the male cardinal. She's kind of a tan colored, with a little bit of red blended into her, uh, but, uh, and do you know why that she isn't as pretty as he is? Why? Because the female is going to sit on the nest on the eggs. And if she is n less noticeable, oh. she's safer on the nest. That makes sense. He, he will help her after she, the eggs are laid in her nest. And, uh, uh, but anyway, she, he, uh, he does the work of bringing in the food for the I for see. The, for she the just sits one. there on the nest. She, yeah, and, until the eggs are hatched. Now, that's a chickadee to the right of the cardinal. That's right. I recognize that one yeah. too. Yeah, that's a chickadee. The chickadee, uh, both the male and the female look quite a lot alike, hmm. but she is just a little duller in her color than he is. Is and that for the same reason? For the same reason. Yeah. 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 And what what is it on? What is that? Uh... That's on a piece of driftwood. We have a camp on a lake and I go around the edges of the lake and pick up driftwood and so I have a pile of them right here in the corner. I see there's a driftwood right over to my left here, right over here. Yes, you're right. Now to the right of the chickadee, I know that one too, it's a goldfinch. That's right, that's right. That's the male of the goldfinch. Where he's yellow, she has kind of a, a dull greenish color. And then what uh, type of wood? is uh, that uh, gold finch on. Oh, that's a piece of driftwood. And then there's a little piece of uh, a block of hardwood below that. But that's a piece of driftwood that, that I have brightened up a little bit. A lot of driftwood, just as you find it, is kind of dull gray. And so the, the driftwood that I use, I, I paint it. And I also add, add things like the, the little piece of lichen that you can see down on the oh, side. Well, I see that, I see that. Lichen is a little growth that comes on the side of a tree. Well, I'm liking this conversation. Oh, you oh. <laughs> I had to say that. <laughs> That's all right. All right, <laughs> okay, to the right of the goldfinch is some type of an owl. I don't know what type of owl it is, but it's an owl. What type of owl is that? That is a saw wet owl. The, the spelling is S-A-W, like a saw. Mm -hmm and W-H-E-T. Now, now wetting a saw is sharpening the saw in the okay. blades with a little a little file, which makes a kind of a little screeching noise. Mm -hmm. as you, and that's where the voice of the saw wet owl sounds very familiar. Uh, really? To, to, the, to the, the filing of the saw. I made the owl out of tupelo. You use tupelo a lot? I use birds? tupelo quite a lot, and I also use basswood. So you must have a horde of Tupelo and other types of wood right oh, somewhere. Oh, I've got a pile of it somewhere. And it looks like you got a feather. That feather looks great. And, and I know you put a rock next to the feather. Yeah, and the rock is actually a wooden, wooden rock that I made. And the little feather is, is one of his breast feathers from the front of it that has fallen off because, because birds shed their feathers every now and then. And you're telling me that that rock is really wood that you painted? Yes, that's right. That's amazing. It looks like a real rock. Good. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, fake me out. <laughs>
the owl is the smallest owl we have, that, and that's life size. As really? See, so that's 100%. He's about he's about eight inches high, maybe, maybe not any not any taller than that. But there are other owls that we have around. We, we have the great horned owl, and we have the barred owl. Mm -hmm. B a r r e d. The barred owl creamery is at the Hamilton Farm. And uh, Patty Hamilton is a friend of mine. She makes blue cheese up there. Is that right? Yeah, the barred owl creamery because they have barred owls up there. Yeah. You know what the barred owl says? No. He says, hoo 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 And that's quite common here. But you can always tell what it is because what he's actually saying is, who cooks for you? You know, there's a bird and, it, and uh, I've been told by people I know that it sounds like the bird is saying, cheeseburger. You know what I'm talking about? Which bird that is? Yes, that would be the chickadee. And he's actually saying, hey sweetie, hey sweetie. There's another small bird in our area called the oven bird. It builds yes. its nest on the ground, and its nest is a mound that it builds with a little opening in it that looks like an oven. Really? That's, why, that's where it gets its name. So this uh, carving to the right of the um, owl. Yes. I know what that is. What is it's it? It's an eagle. Ah, you're right. And, but it's uh, only the eagle's head. Yes, it's only the head though, yeah. Yeah. But it's a great looking head. Boy, how long did it take you to carve that? Oh, it probably took me two or three weeks to carve that. Wow, that's amazing. And the painting is absolutely fantastic. That's a life-size head. I made that a while ago to go into a competition. That took what was called best of show in the eagle head carvings. It's carved out of basswood, I believe. Now, how do you do the eyeballs for these things? Oh, I, I buy the eyeballs. Okay, I was gonna yeah. say, man, that's a pretty, you're doing a good job with the eyeballs there. You can buy eyes for you. Really? Yes, but you can buy all sorts of eyes at various sizes. Now, most small birds, for instance, have, have brown eyes with a little uh, black center to them. And, uh, but there, are, but of course you can see on the eagle that it has a different color in, but behind there, it's not brown. Well, that's a beautiful piece. Thank you. All these birds, they're just gorgeous. I've written six books. Six books? Yes. All on birds. Right. And how to carve them? That's correct. I put kits together. And what's in your kit? The, in the kit is a, is a copy of my book, and then it's a, a cutout of the bird, and then it has the feet and the, and the eyes in there, so you can complete the bird. One of these days, I have to get a kit from you, and I'll try it. Well, and then I'll have some weird looking thing and uh, <laughs> hey, look at my, how'd it turn out? You'll be like, oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I'll let you get back to your tufted mousey thing over there. All right, the tufted tit mouse. Yes, that, the bird. All right. I'll let you get back to your bird. All right. All right, buddy. I'll Thank you. That. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. You take care. I'll, I'll let you go that way and I'll go this way. All right. All right. Thanks, buddy.